as people know, you and Custom Auto uh, trained young Mike Tyson. And the interaction there uh, between the three of you led to the three of you parting ways. Given your value for loyalty, can you tell the full story of uh, what led up to this? And maybe the pain you felt from that? Uh, it was a f I guess it was the second time in my life I felt betrayed. Um, the first time was when I, um, you know, I was whatever, young, 17, and I got arrested. I was with all these older guys, tough guys, whatever, and um, supposedly. And uh, the detectives separated us, that's what they do. And... Um, you know, they they asked me who did whatever, who's gotten this, that, you know, all that, the particulars of obviously what we did. And, you know, it was me. And um, they said, you sure? You don't want to change that? You want to, because your friends changed it. And and these cops, they were nasty, but they were cops. They were the way, you know, you're going to wind up in Rikers with, and they're going to be doing this to you. Yeah. And I won't even say the things because then uh, why say them, you know? Figure it out. But, uh, you know, they're trying to get what they're trying to get. And, you know, you want to change it? And um, no. And But I felt very betrayed, you know? Yeah. And um, especially when I was standing in the in the cell <laughs> in Rikers looking at the airplanes leave LaGuardia Airport yeah. and then hoping I was on one. You know, I was making like a deal with God that let me be on one of those planes and let it crash. I'll take a shot. Was part of you proud that you didn't give up your friends? No, because I didn't understand what proud was. I didn't understand nothing. I just understood that. Um, rules are rules. You're just loyal and that's it. I didn't even know there was an option. <laughs> I, did, I didn't think there were, I know the cops said you could do this, but that, there was no option. My father never had an option. But the betrayal, the private betrayal was like, and so when Cuz, <laughs> we were partners, me and Cuz. Yeah. Cuz was retired. This stupid kid goes up there and all of a sudden I start training fighters. First I won the gloves, Cuz put me in the gloves, I won the gloves that I had an injury, whatever. But bottom line is, I still want to fight. I want to turn pro, I want to fight. That was the plan. And... um. And Cuz had a different plan. Cuz Cuz was like, you can't. And he had it set up a little bit. Whatever. Without getting into it. Hey, he did me a favor. Mm -hmm. And I, I like to think he knew he was doing me a favor. And you know what? I do think he was. Mm -hmm. He was doing himself a little bit of one, too. But, it, but he was doing it for the greater cause. Because he believed in this thing of boxing. Mm -hmm. he, he believed that it changed lives. He believed that it was worthwhile. Yeah. He believed that there was a power to it beyond the left hook. The big picture of boxing. Yeah. He believed in it. Yeah, he believed that to be a champion, you had to be special. You had to be smart. You had to have character. You had uh, that. You had to be a better person, and that you couldn't make a champion if you didn't make him a better person first. Mm -hmm. And and that that this you know this could strengthen people. The the sport could strengthen people in those ways. So he he was married to it, and he he was old, and he needed. There was no one in the gym. It was empty. And it was above a police station, which was crazy. And he needed an heir to the throne. He needed to pass it on to someone. And he saw something. And all of a sudden he said he saw that my career as a boxer was less important than having me become his heir to the throne and become his trainer, his man, his guy, yeah. to continue <laughs> that we could do a lot more for him and for 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 everyone, not just for him, but for everyone. It was more like to keep it going. Like, yeah. like it couldn't die. It couldn't die. And because he was afraid that it would die with him. And he committed his whole life to it. He didn't get married because of boxing. So he didn't, so he saw me as, as you know, the, the little bit of, you know, the seed to plant for, for more 
things to grow yeah. uh, before that plant died. And so he, all of a sudden he says, you can't fight. And I had people tell me that I could go somewhere else and fight. Mm -hmm. And I could, mm -hmm. but I couldn't right? because I'd be disloyal. Loyalty is everything. Yeah. So I couldn't leave Cuss. Yeah. And he kind of knew that. And, and so, uh, you know, I couldn't leave him. And he said, you have an ability to teach. He said, knowledge means nothing. He said, see these Britannica? He had Britannica, Britannica encyclopedias, uh, the whole set in, mm -hmm. in our library. He said, you see these? Yeah, I see them. All the knowledge of the world, whatever, uh, is in these. Mm -hmm. All right. Means nothing if you don't have somebody to convey it to people. Otherwise, it just sits on a bookshelf and looks good. He goes, you have the ability to convey knowledge to people. You're a teacher. You were born to be a teacher. You'd lessen yourself by only being a champion fighter mm -hmm. because you'd only take care of one person. Mm -hmm. You could take care of all kinds of people, and you could do this, and you could do that, and you could do this. So we go on this venture. It took a minute because <laughs> I didn't believe him at first. But finally, we, I am. I'm there. I'm training fighters. And then he he gets me to buy in, and I I was a teacher, and I start teaching these kids, and there's no one in the gym, it's dead, and all of a sudden there's ten kids, fifteen, twenty, twenty five, thirty, thirty five, forty, forty five, Catskill Boxing Club, which was never there, now it's there, and I'm training fighters. I'm taking him down to South Bronx to get experience. One of his former fighters, Nelson Cuevas, down to South Bronx. I'm taking him down there to get smokers, to get fights when they're ready. After I teach, I'm wearing out dungarees. I'm getting holes in my dungaree. I was fashionable before it was fashionable to have holes in my dungarees. Nice. I could have made a lot of money with that yeah. because I was on my knees You're with these little kids, nine years old, 10 years old, <laughs> yeah. eight years old, 10, 12, 13, 14, mm -hmm. all these kids. And, and I'm teaching them and I'm building a gym. And Cuz only came once a week because he was semi-retired, you know. And and he's home. and when he would come once a week, he knew he couldn't give me money, but he gave me more than money. He gave me praise. Mm -hmm. Oh, and he said, "Look what Atlas is doing. He's creating champions." And I was like, "Whoa, yeah, <laughs> wow, I'm yeah. I'm doing good." Yeah. And 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 then all of a sudden, after four years of that because I was up there seven years, eight years, eight years. After about three and a half, four years of that, we get a phone call that they get this kid in prison and try on prison uh, from one of the guys that knew Cus, Matt Peransky, uh, and, and there's a state, there's a correction officer named Bobby Stewart who used to box, and Cus had helped him out a little bit, a little bit, and, um, and they knew we had this gym now that was really starting to become something because we were winning tournaments and everything else. They go, we got this kid, Mike Tyson. He he's, he's 12 years old. He's 190 pounds. He's a mess. But Bobby Stewart got involved with him, uh, you know, the, the former fighter, and he's taken a liking to it. And now where he didn't behave at all and he didn't listen to anyone, now he's listening because Bobby's got a carrot, and the carrot is hit, hit teach him boxing, and now he, he's at the point now where we we want you to take a look, you and Teddy. All right, bring him down. What did you think when you first saw Mike Tyson? Well, I, I want to I see his birth certificate, because he 190 pounds, 12 years old, and all solid. Yeah. Um, you know, really? But, yeah. Just physically, just as a physical yeah. specimen. And, and, and Big guy. Yeah, and listen... Cuz was right. I was a teacher. He was right. And he was testing me even that day. Mm -hmm. He said, what do you think? So I said, well, we ain't going to know nothing in the bag. Who the frick cares about that? He knocked the bag down. Yeah, we got to put him in. With uh, We got no one to put him in that way. I didn't have anyone that way. We got to test him. Everyone's got to be tested. And um, so you got to put him in responsibly. But let's put him in. Just respond. But let's put him in with Bobby Stewart, former pro fighter. Had fourteen pro fights, smaller than Tyson. Uh, he was when he was fighting. He was one seventy five. But still, he's twenty eight years old. Tyson's twelve. Come on, and and he'll work with him, mm -hmm. right? So we do. We put him in. Tyson. He recognized the moment. He understood this was an audition. This was a chance. You know, this was that TV show, change your life, and. He understood that if he 
past the audition, he could change, possibly change his life. He wasn't sure what. How could he be sure what exactly? But it was better than what he had. And so he was on audition. So he wanted, he innately understood what we would want to see. Ferociousness, toughness, uh, character, uh, desire, you know, and of course ability. Mm-hmm. Well, we saw the ability, power, speed, but it was it was unbridled, it was untaught, it was it was raw. He didn't know really much at all, um, at all. But we saw that. But he wanted to show more. He knew that wasn't enough. Again, innate intelligence. He he had to show desire. He had to show toughness, and so. I was being responsible. After two rounds, that's enough. Normally, I don't put a guy into boxing until maybe four months, five months, six months, eight months, ten months. It depends what it takes to learn on the floor before it's responsible to put him in the ring to, to actually take on uh, incoming real live shells instead of blanks. Yeah. And so normally, I wouldn't have men. And I knew after today, he wouldn't be in the ring again if I trained him. I would teach him first, and then he'd get back in in a few months. But for this day, it was the only way. It, it, it's kind of like I used to make this analogy, and Cus loved it. I, I, he said, "What's training a fighter? What do you what, what do you look for training a fighter, Teddy? You know, he asked me these ridiculous questions just to test me." And, and I say, it's like going to Macy's with, I, oh, he loved it. I, I said, it's like, I said, it's like going to Macy's window on Christmas. He goes, what do you mean, Macy's window? You know, because it's like, uh, boom, boom, boom. So what do you mean, Macy's window? Oh, you go to Macy's window and they get the window with everything you want to see. Yeah. Everything in there. And it looks great. Oh, they do everything. And yeah, and then what? Well, then you ask what's in the warehouse and they tell you nothing. <laughs> yeah. And and Cus says, that's it. That's a trainer. Yeah. And I wanted to see what was in the warehouse because I saw what was in the, uh, Macy's window. I saw the power. I saw the speed. So he goes two rounds, and he gets a bloody nose. Here's the weird thing. Not weird. Very telling. We knew what we were doing. Not bragging, but we knew what we were doing because he got a bloody nose because he got hit. After that bloody nose, he never got another bloody nose. You know why? He didn't get hit because he learned. He was still strong, but he was smarter now. Anyway, he goes two rounds, and I saw, and I'm being responsible because if he goes more, it's not responsible. I saw what I needed to see. I saw speed, I saw power, I saw athleticism, and I saw, I didn't believe him. I thought he was lying to me. I'm just telling you. I, I thought he was lying, trying to act tough when he wasn't really feeling tough. It didn't matter. Cuz questioned me on it afterwards. What did you see? And when I said, he goes, young master. You know, again, he wasn't paying me money. So he had to give me something, right? And and that was better than, that was currency. Young master, I'm yeah. the young master, whoa. You know, young master, you know what I mean? Like, I felt like that guy Kung Fu, you know? Yeah. Like in the movie, like Kung Fu, grasshopper, when you're ready, when you can take this out of my hand, you can leave. And That's powerful. Yeah, it was. <laughs> it worked. <laughs> Cuz knew how to work me. <laughs> and he did, and and it worked. And And so, but you know what? I didn't mind being worked. I kind of knew I was being shuffled a little bit. Well, you're making it sound a little bit negative, but it's also extremely positive. That's a teacher instilling wisdom into you that you carried forward and impacted a lot of people. Yeah, because he got the job done, but he did it his way. And and he did it for a lot of a myriad of reasons. And But at the end of the day, it was all good. And I, I just had to understand that eventually. Uh, later on, but and you do the same. You do things your way, and carry some of him in you, some of your father in you. Yeah, that day, you know, that day was funny because when Cus said, "What did you see, Teddy?" With him, well, after two rounds, I got up in the ring. I knew I was going to train him. Mm-hmm. Obviously, we weren't going to say no, <laughs> and he still had about four months to serve, and we were going to work it out. Yeah, and when I got up on the ring apron, that's my gym. I'm the boss. You know, people later on in life call me a dictator. You know what I said? Yeah, you're right. <laughs> I didn't deny. People thought, you you, uh, you mean I'm right? Yeah, I'm a dictator. I'm a trainer. I'm the boss. Yeah. I'm in charge. Yeah. If I, uh, You wouldn't be here if I wasn't. Yeah. What the frick you need me for if I'm not freaking in charge? You idiot. Yeah, yeah, damn right. I'm, uh, well, what do you think? It's a, it's a shared responsibility? No, it's my responsibility. Mm-hmm. That's why you're here. Yeah, I am in charge. Mm-hmm. You shouldn't be here if you don't understand that. 
So I get up there and I know that I'm going to be training them. I got to show them who the boss is. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm being really frank about this. So I get up there and I say, that's it, out. Nah. No, no. You know, this is Tyson. Yeah. No, let me go. I want to do another round. I want to do another one. I want. I said, out. Did you hear what I said? Mm-hmm. Because I knew that, you know, he was going to test me. He was testing me. Mm-hmm. I, I said, I said, get out. Mm-hmm. Uh, he got out. But were you impressed with the fact that you want to keep going or no? Yes, and I recognized what it really was. So Cuz asked me, what was that? Cuz mm-hmm. wanted to know what the young master saw. So Cuz said, what was that? Mm-hmm. I said it was, um, it was an act. He goes, you saw that? Did he really want to go? I said, no. I said, he didn't really want to go, but he knew that we want him to go, and he made himself ready to go in order to satisfy it, and that's just as good. And Cuz said, Damn right, it's just as good. All that matters was not, not, not how he got there, but that he got there. Yeah. That's all that matters. That he got there. That he got to the place to act like a fighter, to to do what we want him to do, to be ready to persevere, to go beyond the comfort level, mm-hmm. to do another round. Mm-hmm. He didn't want to. Damn right, he didn't want to. But he knew we want him to, and he knew in order to pass the test. He had to do it. Mm -hmm. And he said, you're right. He goes, now it's going to be your job to teach him, to make him a fighter that don't get bloody noses, that don't get hit, and will get to that place without being coerced to get there, to get to that place on his own instead of using the things that he had to use to get to that place today. Those things are not going to be available one day when you, and listen to this, you talk about a man being prophetic, because it's pretty good. Uh, you talk about a man being on a job, on a money, Lex, he says, how do you think he finishes the sentence? He goes, because someday, you, because, you know, you're going to have to make sure that he learns these things, because, you know, he, he'll be your first heavyweight champ. I, what did you just say? <laughs> He's 12 years old. Yeah. Yeah. He, he he's been arrested thirty times. Yeah. He's getting out of jail, out of you know uh, juvenile detention, try on. <laughs> um, he's a mess in a lot of ways. There's a lot of things we find out later, a lot of problems, weaknesses. So he goes, and you have that's part of your job. That'll be part of your job. And but he really said that. He and then then he turned to him. He goes, "You want to come live with us, young man? You want to be a fighter?" Yes. And even that, Cus said to me later, what do you think about that? I said, he ain't The way he said the, yes. The, yeah, the way he said yes. Yeah, yes, sir. Yeah. He said, what do you think about that? And, I, and I, we're talking. I said, he ain't going to be that polite in a, in a little while down the road. Uh, again, he knew that that's what he felt that he needed to to project himself as, to to present himself as, to, to get to where he wanted to get to. He goes, yeah, yeah. yeah. Did you see what Cus was seeing in terms of the heavyweight champion of the world? No. Again, the easiest answer would be yes. Teddy's just, <laughs> Teddy Alice, a genius. Wow. Wow. Teddy, wow. Yeah. No, 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 no. But again, it was my job. Yeah. And I just, I, my job, it was simple, simpler than Cus's. Cus knew too much. I knew nothing. I just knew, you know, rudiments of boxing. I knew what it took to be a fighter. And, and, how to execute it, the steps of executing it. So I took those steps. The 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 rest of it, you get blurred by those other things. I wasn't blurred by those other things. I, it was it was just get him in the gym, make him mentally stronger, make him face things, and teach him how to slip punches, <laughs> and and create holes and fill those freaking holes yeah. with devastating punches. This is a cuss. And what are you gonna do? I'm going to teach them to fill holes and fill them with punches with bad intentions. Yeah. And and that became the moniker. Yeah. Uh, and then Tyson would say that. I'm, I'm throwing punches with bad intentions. Mm-hmm. Yes, you are. And, um, you know. How do you make it mentally tougher? So that part of the job, the you said the don't get a bloody nose, but the part of the job where it makes it mentally tougher, how do you do that? Most important part of the job, to make them face things. Yeah. Make him face where he's lying to himself, where he's submitting. What if we start this conversation with submission? Yeah. Submit less. Yeah. 
Submit less. Submit less every day. Submit less. Cuz only come to the gym once in a while. And if I had him sparring, he would come because that was his that was his project. That was the heavyweight. Mm-hmm. Now he came. You know, put life in Cuz. Mm-hmm. Cuz had life. He, he was losing a little life. But that made the light bulb bright again. It did. And it was great to see. I felt proud of that. I felt connected to that. And that's why when 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 it all went bad and Cuz took the side that the only side he could take, the side of the next heavyweight champion of the world. But he but he left me, his partner, the young master. <laughs> and for the second time I get betrayed. And I'm like For a while, I thought everything Cus taught me, said to me, was a liar. I didn't want to be any part of it anymore. Until I got a little more mature and I got a little past that, where I was able to understand. I was able to understand that just because somebody that you perceived as great in every area is you find to be weak in certain areas doesn't mean that they can't still be what they want to you. It's it's something that it's something that can be understood or forgiven. It it's hard. It's hard to get to that place to forgive somebody in that kind of way that I felt betrayed because. Cuz told me the most important thing was loyalty. Cuz told me he loved me because I was loyal. Cuz Cuz told people that the reason that he went to court was because I didn't give up anybody, even though it meant putting me in the risk of going to jail for ten years. And he and Cuz felt that he admired those traits, and so I assumed that he he would show the same traits, and he took a deal. He took a deal. He took a deal. He 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 signed the papers that those that those so called feds of mine signed. You know he 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 took a deal to to uh, you know to to have the future heavyweight champ as it turned out, uh, and and to let me you know to let me go to sign the deal to to let me take you know take the weight. For people who don't know. Uh... Mike was inappropriate with a young girl and you pulled the gun on him. I don't know if there's deeper things to say about that situation. No. But why do you think Cus made the decision to cut you off from both Mike Tyson and from Cus Tomato? Like to break that when he valued loyalty so I served much. my purpose. I got him to the way he needed to get. <laughs> um, brought life back in the gym. If I wasn't in the gym at that particular time, Tyson never would have been in the gym. There would have been no gym to bring him to. Mm-hmm. When they called up and made that phone call to bring him to the gym, there would have been no activity. There would have been no boxing program. There would have been, you know, no trainer training him 24-7 the way I was, where Cus wasn't capable of doing that at that point in his life. Yeah. But then again, it's not poor Teddy. <laughs> I get the benefit of a career. I get the benefit of knowledge. I get the benefit of a life. I get the benefit of learning. Of of becoming hopefully a better person, um, I got the benefit of being betrayed again. Um, but well, that's a hell of a statement right there. I don't know what the benefit of that is. You can learn to forgive weakness. You know, when you realize how how easy it is to be weak. And and when you realize that somebody asked me, how did you get to the point where you you could forgive? Right? It's a pretty good question, pretty simple, pretty basic, pretty important, right? And I didn't I didn't understand I understood, but I did understand immediately for me. I said, How can I not forgive somebody? It becomes easier to learn how to forgive when you're still trying to forgive yourself, when you're still in the process of trying to forgive yourself for all your own inherent weaknesses and betrayals of people like my father, 
in different ways that we forget very easily because it's handy and it's a way of surviving. It's a lot easier to to figure it out, rationalize it, to 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 find forgiveness when you realize that you still haven't figured out completely how to forgive yourself. I'm still trying to figure that out. And um, so that helped me figure out how to forgive Cuss. Because to figure out how to forgive me, I had understood why I did these things, where the, where the weaknesses came from, where the selfishness came from, where the convenience came from, that they really existed. But they didn't exist for malice. They existed for me not being prepared to understand that I could be stronger, to want to be stronger. And then I looked at Cus. He wanted to be stronger, but he got to a point in life where he had been strong for a lot of his life. Mm-hmm. He was strong with me. He was strong with a lot of things in his life. And does everyone deserve a pass in life where he got he got to a place where everything was in one basket, the basket of boxing. He once told me that he never got married because it would be un, it would have been selfish to a woman to have gotten married when his whole life was boxing that he couldn't give to a kid, he couldn't give to her. He could, and and then I thought about it. He had no money really, and Jim Jacobs and Bill Caden took care of the bills, so he didn't really need money that way, but. The one, what was the payoff for that kind of life, that kind of commitment, that kind of sacrifice? Really, what was the payoff? The payoff was to have champions, to have a champion that would keep your name alive. You know, that word legacy, like what does it mean? Sometimes it's it's just a word. Sometimes it's it's more than a word. It's 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 a reprieve. It's a pension plan. Is is being given a pension on your way out for the rest of your life, for for your life wherever you're going, yeah. you're going to wherever you're going for eternity. Um, it, it's 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 the only thing that you take with you, is what you left behind. And for us, it was all about leaving behind a mark, a mark that of champion. Yeah, it was attached to ego. We all have it. Yeah, it was attached to some selfishness and all. But yeah, it was also attached to wanting to leave something great behind. To know that you were part of it, that you existed for a reason, that, that, that you sacrificed for a reason. And all that freaking pain I brought my father, I was searching for something. Yeah, I made it into a righteous search. I made it into I did, and I made it into I, I, it was okay because it was righteous, and I. Uh, but it still did damage. It still did damage. It still hurt people. It still betrayed my father's trust. And Cus betrayed mine, but he didn't do it maliciously. He he did it out of again. My father came home. This is how I'm going to connect it. My father came home from from work one night, twelve o'clock, and I was waiting up. And like I said, I was over nine, ten years old. And he got mad at me. He goes, "Go to bed. What are you doing up?" I said, I'm "Waiting for you. I'm waiting for you." And um, he said, "Well, go to bed." I said, "No. I, I, I what, what were you doing?" He said, "I was at the hospital. You were there. Why were you there so late?" You know. <laughs> He answered me. He, he said, there was a patient. There was a sick patient. I said, oh, he must be better now because you're his doctor, you know, because my father could fix anything. And my father, nothing got in the way of the truth. Nothing. Nothing. Even blown his son's bubble. Matter of factly, he said to me, uh, no, he's not going to get better. He's going to die. And, um, so as a nine-year-old kid, you know, you're a kid, you're selfish, you know, not in a bad way, but, you know, you want what you And I said, um, 
I said two things. First, I said, how? how? You're his doctor. How? I mean, it can't be. And then I said, I, I just said it almost angry. Then why were you there? Like, you should have been here with me. Yeah. And you know what he said to me? Because you don't give up on life. Go to bed. And don't give up on life. And that's, I finally connected the dots. This idiot that didn't graduate high school, <laughs> I finally connected the dots. I was asking Cuts to give up on life. You don't, you don't give up on life. You don't give up on aspirations of life. Life is all forms of life. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be a physical form of it. It's life. It's having a reason to be alive. It's having a reason to have tomorrow. And and Cus's only reason to have tomorrow was to have another heavyweight champ. Yeah, and champ. Teddy Atlas, even though we were together all those years and we were partners and we trained together and we were... We were, you know, the only thing we didn't do was what they did in the Indian movies, where where they cut the finger and they became blood brothers. Yeah, that's that's the only thing we didn't yeah. do, and I felt like we did that. Yeah, without cutting, and and, and now here we are. And still, and he freaking betrayed me. This, and and um, and then all of a sudden I connected the dots. I was like, he didn't betray me in the in that cold sense he didn't, didn't give, up give up on, on life, life. <laughs> uh years later mike tyson apologized to you what what what's meaningful to you about that how does that fit the story i want to be the great gracious guy right now <laughs> say oh i'm so you hum human <laughs> that that you know uh, a man's man enough to say sorry that's it uh, uh, we're good I want to be really that. That's 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 the that's the best presentation of Teddy Atlas I could put out there. He's a good guy. He forgives. He he's a good guy. He's a he's a he's a stand up guy and he's a good guy. I'm not sure if he truly did it for himself. That he really did it because he felt that. It was true. But but if he's persuaded by other things, he was in the middle. I know I'm taking it too deep. I know it, but what am I going to do? He was in the middle of 12 steps with the, you know, getting out of drugs, alcohol, 12 steps, which is a, a commemorable thing. Uh, really, it is. And and he's taking the steps. And part of the steps was to admit or to apologize to all people you offended in life. Yeah. Okay. But... Are you doing it for the 12 steps or are you doing it because you really, truly have come to terms with believing what you did was that hurtful to me and that it matters to you that it was that hurtful to me and that you were wrong in doing it? Did you do it for... I know that's deep. I know that I'm a freaking idiot. I'm a, you're, you're, you're a teddy. Freaking, you're, you're, you should be better than that. He's better than you. Yeah, maybe he is better than me. Maybe he is. Really, seriously, maybe he is. And and I took it. He put his hand. I took it. I we hugged. He said, "I love you." I I I yeah yeah. I but I want to believe. But what did Cuz tell me? No matter what a man says, it's what he does in the end that he intended to do all along. Yeah. So to this day, today, was it really? genuine or was it reflexive of that moment for him to get what he needed to you know for that step or was it truly for what i needed to to really that he really cared that he, what he did to me caused me to do what i did because i did something that was pretty damn bad to him too is he able to deal with that and put that where it has to be put. Is he able to put that? Or or is it just he did something he had to do and maybe he's sorry he did it? I know I'm... Look, I appreciate it that he... I would have rather been in a private place. Yeah, so for people who don't know, you were in the middle of commentating a fight 
and he walked up from behind you and he said he was sorry. He shook your hand, gave you a hug. I didn't know he said, I love you. <laughs> yeah, he's emotional. I get emotional a little bit too. But but he he's emotional and he can be, and he can be, I can see why people have a fascination and a love affair with him right now. Because he was, because, you know, he was, he was the meteor, the meteor that went across the sky that is, if they didn't see it, their parents told them about it. There was a media that came across the sky one day, yeah. and 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 the media is walking around in the room now, and that's the meteorite. right. And then and it actually landed here, and and that's it right there. And 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 now he's come a long way, and now he's you know he's more human, and and he he's lovable, you know, and and uh, he's compassionate, and he cries, and and I get the fascination, I get the love affair, I get it because we're inherently we're people that want to forgive, we're people that we want to be good, we and part of being good is to forgive people and to to show compassion to people, and so and when somebody's been damaged, uh to acknowledge they've been damaged, to acknowledge that you know they've been damaged and you care about them being damaged. And how do you show care? Through admiration. You know, in in some ways, almost through adulation. And he's getting adulation from people, like, you know, uh, which is to an incredible level. And it's because, it's a phenomena. But but I get it. I understand it. And um, I don't know if he gets it. I don't know if underneath all of this, he's a complex guy. He's a sensitive guy. I don't know, and I am too. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> One complex guy talking about another complex guy. I don't know if underneath it all, where he's really, truly at, as far as that day that he said that to me. Is there part of you that's sorry to Mike? for I'm not that, sorry. Pulling I, the gun I, on him? Yeah, and that's, listen, that's fair. I I know dimensions of, human nature too well to not know that he still has to have certain because i have those strong feelings what it's not fair for him to have them damn right it's fair mm -hmm. now now he could look at it if, if he was to be held to his word that night that he just acknowledges that what happened he deserved because of what he you know the position he put me in and he put himself in what he did and I wouldn't change nothing, you know. But still, you're you don't regret pulling the gun on him. I regret that I had to. Yeah, yeah, I regret very much that that I had to. That I regret very much. I'm, he crossed the line. I hated him for putting me in that position. That that you know, how dare he think that that somebody's feelings are that trivial. That the way I would feel about myself and the way the girl would feel about herself that was 11 years old at the time, how she would feel about herself. How, how dare that he think it's that trivial that, you know, that I shouldn't be ready to freaking, to both die and kill for that. Yeah. Why didn't Custom Auto see it in a deeper way and talk he, through he it? The word came back to me, but of course, what does it mean? But the word came back to me that Cus said you were right. But if he took the side of Teddy, he would destroy a, potentially a great, a great fighter. Why? Why do you think that? Okay, if you were to try to understand the point he was making, why? Why is that true? Is isn't the part of greatness that you said is building the character of knowing what is right? What you know? Cus was afraid to to go there where he used to not be afraid because. It's kind of like you're never afraid of going up, and I I get it. You know, when I train a fighter now, if I come out of retirement, I train a fighter now, I feel in camp like I'm. I feel like I'm on death row every day. That that if every day I I try to retrace my memory and say, did I feel this way when I was younger? I I don't remember feeling this way. I feel every day a dreadful feeling that if I don't get this right. I, I betrayed everything. I betrayed the fighter's trust. Mm -hmm. I betrayed uh, what I'm supposed to be. And then one, one day I tried to figure it out. Why do I feel this way? It's so intense. <laughs> I was in camp for two months training a guy for the world title a couple few years ago, um, fighting the hardest puncher in the world at the time, and um, Adonis Stevenson. 
and the fighter was Ukrainian, and I was, you know, brought in to train him for that fight, and he trusted me and changed his whole style. Trusted me. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, I went to bed every night like praying, um, dread, waking up, dread, my stomach down to here, yeah. every day, saying, "What? What if I fail him? What? What? What if everything that I told him was going to happen don't happen? What if I fail him? What? What if he trusted me and I, I betrayed that trust and." The thing was the with Cus was, you know, he used to be stronger than that. And then I, I tried to figure it out why I got this way and why it was so dreadful to me and why I felt like I was on death row every day training a fighter. Like, did I do enough? Did I do it right? Well, well, will we accomplish what we will we accomplish what I promised them we would accomplish? Mm -hmm. Would I keep my word? And and then I started thinking, well, how did I become this weak? How did I freaking become? I was a pretty strong freaking guy. Yeah. How did I become this weak? And then finally, I think I figured it out. You know why? Mm. Because I was always working to get up. But once I finally got up, now I was looking down. And I finally hit me. I said, I didn't want to lose. I said, there was nothing to lose on my way up. Mm -hmm. Now all of a sudden, there's something to lose when you're up there and you're looking down. And that's where he was. And, and that's he where was Cus was. Cus, Cus was at the end of his rope. He, he, was, he accomplished the two world champs, all this stuff, right? Everything. He, and, and, and he did it right. Now, all of a sudden, it wasn't about moving forward. It was about not falling down. Holy cow. I was like, I got it, Cus. I got it. I got it. You didn't want to fall down. Oh, my God. You didn't want to fall. And he... This was his last chance. You don't give up on life. This was his last chance to live forever, to, to make everything he did worthwhile, to have the youngest have. It wasn't just heavyweight champ. You got to remember, mm -hmm. he was the youngest heavyweight champ ever. And to have that, it was okay to die now. Mm -hmm. And how's loyalty? <laughs> Someone named Teddy Atlas gonna get in the way of that. That's a tidal wave that there ain't no wall that's been made high enough to stop that tidal wave. And now I'll stop myself. Yeah, there is. Mm -hmm. But but it'd have to be an awful big one. And you know what? Who are we to say that we could ever build that wall that big? Who is any of it? Who am I to say? Do you think if you were to put yourself in the shoes of Cus Customato? Can you see yourself having the big enough wall or you would choose loyalty? Now, if I answer the way I feel, I, I, then then I'm, you know, I'm making myself John Wayne again. You don't have to I, answer that. You know? I think loyalty, loyalty is important. No matter what a man says, it's what he does in the end that he intends to do all, do all along. I didn't make that up, cussed it. And, and when, when this all went down, those words came freaking echoing into my freaking ears. I didn't want them. Cotton doesn't help. And they freaking kept coming into my ears. And what do you think? Still an immature kid at the time. You know, I was young. Still an immature kid at the time. What the freak do you think my response was? You were full of... Yeah. And sure. But I got past that. Do you do you forgive Cus? Have you found forgiveness? Listen, I forgive him because he gave me more than he took away from me. Mm -hmm. If I can, what kind of man am I? To, if I can at least acknowledge that and be grateful for that, he I, he he gave me more than he took from me, and um, I'm grateful for that. I'm also grateful for what I gave him. That I had, you know, th that I I did give him some, and um, at that point in his life, you know, uh, a place, a place to still, to still have test tubes, and um, chemistry experiments, mm -hmm. you know, a laboratory where he could still create great fire, mm -hmm. and I I helped give him that. I helped I help I was part of that lab and making sure that lab was there and um, just that there was the existence of test tubes. 
um, in the place because you can't freaking do experiments without test tubes. No, you're the scientist with the test tubes. Yeah, I, I, I guess so. And um, I, I just hope that um, what I said earlier is is really is really my thread through this whole thing. When you say, "Can you forgive Cuss?" Um, I, I'm still trying to forgive myself. And if if I can have hope that I can forgive myself, I think that hope has to start with the power to forgive someone else. How can I ever forgive myself for all my failings and figure it out if I can't start and practice it by forgiving someone else for some shortcomings? And for me... Uh, that's 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 the only sense of sometimes a very hard thing to make sense of. That that that's my north star. <laughs> that's that's my compass. Cuss used to make me laugh. You know, me and him did everything together. We drive, and we get lost in the city. We get lost in the Bronx, <laughs> and he get all frustrated. And he said, "Atlas, you're a great trainer, but you turn you around, you spin you around, and you're lost." And I said, "Me or we?" <laughs> and because I was the only one who would argue with him, yeah. and and it was really funny sometimes. And I said, "We or me? You yeah. or we or?" And he goes, ah, "I don't care, Cuss." You're lost. <laughs> I'm lost. What are you talking about? Yeah. And then all of a sudden, Cuz couldn't give in. He just couldn't admit. He couldn't give in. You know what he said to me? Mm-hmm. All of a sudden, he goes, when I was in the Army, if I had a compass, I could get out of the woods. I said, we're not in the woods. We're not in the Army. We don't have a compass. Cuz, <laughs> Cuz, yeah. just try, don't argue with me. I, one time we're driving. I, wa- I want to get back to Catskill. We we just finished at the Bronx. <laughs> it's been a long day, yeah. Uh, you know, visiting the the murderers' ink uh, houses and everything else that that he took me through for the eighteen hundredth time, and um, and he would fall asleep. You know, he was getting older, and he and he would just fall asleep in the car. So what do you think? I went a little faster, right? Mm-hmm. Because before he went to sleep, he said, "Don't speed." Mm-hmm. So I don't consider myself. I try to be an honest guy, and I try to be a freaking, but, yeah. Yeah, you know. It was a five or six guys. What did I say earlier? <laughs> try to do less submitting. Yeah. Really, in all faces, try to submit a little less. Try to lie a little less today. Mm-hmm. A little less. Try to get stronger. Try to get a little better. Mm-hmm. So here we are, and we're, we're driving, and all of a sudden he's, you know, I, what did I do, 80 75 probably yeah probably did you know whatever and um all of a sudden he wakes up you were speeding oh i lie no i wasn't don't lie i'm not lying (laughs) you lied again hey you were speeding Mm -hmm. now come on this guy he's you know what i mean he's 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 unbelievable so I got a freaking, you know, he's the he he's David Copperfield. I want to know the trick. Yeah, I want to know how he freaking he made this thing disappear. <laughs> so I said, "What are you talking? How do you know?" He goes, "Cause I timed you. I looked at the post number, and I'm like, what? I looked at the post <laughs> number on the side of the road yeah. where we were, Brilliant. whatever miles that, and and I never knew they even existed. Yeah, I look and I said, yeah, there's little numbers. He started timing, and, and he I goes, fell asleep. yeah, I, he timed it, and he looked. He goes, we couldn't have got from here to there yeah. in that amount of time unless you were going 75 miles an hour. And I'm like, all right, I'm a smart man. All right, I'm impressed. Uh, you know, don't try to get the mileage, the mile per hour part right it's enough that you got me yeah yeah that's enough i'm uh, yeah i said and i'm not gonna do that no i'm you know and and just he helped me in crazy ways where there would be times where i wanted to be you know where you wanted to be whatever right convenient weak Mm. submit right (laughs) and then all of a sudden all of a sudden, Cus, in my mind, Cus was there with the stopwatch. 
<laughs> and, and I'd be like, you know, uh, no, you know, where I was about to say yeah. yes to whatever that yeah. particular situation was. Uh, somebody up there calling. Hello? Hello? Yes, you're great. Thank you. Just for the record, never had a phone call like this. It's hotel security. Uh, the question is, he asked me is, are you okay, sir? Are you okay? Are we okay? I think so. <laughs> I, I think so, so far. Yeah. You know, I can only go like so far. It's kind of like that old joke, you know, where the guy jumps off the Empire State Building, yeah. and he's falling down, <laughs> and he's going, you know, 80th floor, yeah. 70th floor, 60th yeah. floor, 50, and he gets past the 50th floor, and they're looking out the window, and he goes, how am I doing? <laughs> so far, so good. <laughs> I, I don't yeah. know where it's going to end, but... um. So uh, Mike Tyson is considered by many to be one of the great boxers, one of the greatest boxers of all time, heavyweight boxers. Uh, what do you think on the positive side made him great? I don't know if he was ever great. I know he was sensational. I know he was the greatest mix of maybe speed and power ever. I know he was one of the greatest punches from either side of the plate, left or right. There's been great punches with just the right hand, like Ernie Chavis and Deontay Wilder mm -hmm. and Max Bear. I don't know if there's ever been anyone who could punch as good as he did on either side with either hand other than Joe Lewis and a few others. I don't know if there's ever been such a combination of speed and power to that pure level that he had, and it was a pure level. I don't know if there was ever as good a fighter as Tyson was where maybe one night he was great where he wasn't tested, but he might have been ready to be tested that one night against Michael Spinks. Mm -hmm. and when he took him apart in 90 seconds, I think I saw a great fighter that night. I don't think you can be great unless you have all the requirements of being great. What does it take to be a great fighter? Truly great. To not rely on someone else's weakness to be strong. To be strong on your own. Too often he relied on other people's weakness, whether it's to, by being intimidated or whether it's <laughs> because his talent was so much greater than theirs that it was like putting a monster truck in there with a Volkswagen and the Volkswagen was going to get crushed. No matter how much horsepower the Volkswagen might have had under the hood and you put under the hood... <laughs> it was going to get crushed. The monster truck was not going to allow it to be a contest. And to be able to find a way when your talent wasn't enough. He didn't find a way when his talent wasn't enough. And, he, and I'm not making statements if I'm not ready to put some evidence, you know, like if we were in a courtroom, Exhibit A, um, when he fought, when he fought Buster Douglas, um, Buster Douglas matched his will and didn't get intimidated, stood up to him. He didn't do what most people did. He didn't submit even a little bit. Not that night. He had in the past, but that night he didn't. Why? Because Buster had, Buster had a secret weapon that night, his mother. Buster's mother had died a few months previous. He loved his mother very much. Buster had always had talent, big heavyweight, talented, could punch, <laughs> technically solid. <laughs> he was all those things, always was, but he quit in fights. He, he, he did less than he should have done. He never lived up to his ability. He gave in. He submitted. He wasn't strong enough. He never had a reason to be strong enough. When his mother died, he had a reason. Nothing could hurt him as much as his mother dying hurt him, Mike Tyson included. That night, Mike Tyson could not hurt him as much as his mother had hurt him by dying. That night, he had a reason to be strong for his mother. And he was strong. He was everything he was supposed to be <laughs> and more. And he stood up to Mike. And Mike, for the first time, maybe ever, was in a fight where he had to overcome something, where he had to be more than talented, more than a puncher, more than a guy with scintillating speed. And he wasn't. 
And then that night got followed by another night with Holyfield. Holyfield wasn't as talented as him, as big as Muncher Puncher, but Holyfield had the character. He was strong in ways that Tyson wasn't strong. He was strong in a way where he could find a way. He was willing to find a way. He's willing to go to the cliff mm -hmm. to, to truly die before he submitted. And, uh, you know, a lot of stuff is just words. <laughs> yeah, they're going to have to carry me out on the shield. Yeah, sure, sure, okay. Yeah, until it comes time to be carried out on the shield. Sometimes there's people that actually mean it. Mm -hmm. You think Mike didn't have that? Joe, well, all right. He let's just say arbitrarily. I don't have his record for me. <laughs> let's say he was fifty-five and five. I know he had about five losses. Mm. All right. Let's say he was fifty-five and five. Right. A lot of knockouts. I have a saying: a fight's not a fight until there's something to overcome. Until then, it's just an athletic uh, exhibition contest. Yeah. Who's a better athlete? <laughs> Who's got more quick twitch fibers? Who's who? Who's more developed? Who's in better this? Who's a, who's more developed in those physical areas? But a fight is not a fight until there's something to overcome. Okay. So if you go by my definition, not Webster's, my definition, which I think means something, Mike Tyson was only in five fights in his life. The five fights where there was something to overcome. And he didn't overcome it. Now, I know people hate me for this, <laughs> including Tyson. <laughs> I, I understand him. Hate me. Oh, you're a hater because you weren't with him. You didn't make the money because this, because that, because you got betrayed. <laughs> I think I'm better than that. I hope I'm better than that. I believe I'm better than that. I'm not a hater. I've, I've broadcast fights for 25 years on ESPN where there were some people in the corner I did not like. And if they did a good job, this guy's doing a great job. And then there were guys that I liked, and I had friendship. I, he, he, he messed up. And we weren't friends no more. Friendship got to be tested. Remember that? So we weren't friends no more. But why did I do that? Because it was my job. It was more important for me. When, when it's all over with, the only thing you're left with is... I mean, we're going to be dust, all of us, right? The only thing we're left with is what carries on, our reputation. Uh, you know, legacy, whatever that is. But our reputation. That's all we're left with. And that's all our kids are left with. I want it to be as good as it can be. I've always had an ability. <laughs> I've done a lot of things wrong, and I've had a lot of lackings. But the one strength I've had, if I had a strength, is to understand somehow, through osmosis, I guess, to learn the lesson that was important is not what's in front of you for those five seconds, for that moment in life. It's what's left behind you when those five seconds are gone. When that what whatever it is that you're dealing with, you know whatever the that moment is, whatever they, that moment, what you do in that moment, the action of that moment is going to stay with you and be you. It's going to become you. <laughs> what what you face for that moment. It's gone. It's it's gone in the air in an instant. It's gone. It's done. Whether you take whether you stand up there and you get shot in the head <laughs> and the guy freaking blows your brains out, or you freaking you you stand up here or you're fighting a guy who's like an un a scary guy to fight, but you fight him and you beat him or he beats you up. But how you represented yourself in that moment is all that matters. That's going to live. What happened don't matter. It don't matter that you got shot in the head. I know that sounds absurd, but if you believe that it was important 
to stand up and ha take the chance to get shot in the freaking head rather than to live like an empty vessel. You know what? Th that's all that freaking matters. And somehow that got freaking wrapped into this freaking head of mine. Like, that's what matters. That's all that matters. You know how many times I went and I, I, there were things, whether it was with this one, with Tyson, with that. I, I didn't want to be there. I was scared to death. But I was more scared. I, I was more scared. Living with regret. How I would have felt. Yeah. I don't want to be in solitary confinement the rest of my <laughs> life with that freaking guy in the cell next to me called regret. Yeah. I don't freaking want to be next to that guy. Yeah. If I want to freaking go down that road, I'll watch Papillon. You know what I mean? And, and I'll get my fill from that. Mm -hmm. But I don't want to freaking live it. I'm afraid of what my children would think of me if if I fail in those areas. Why? Because that's forever. When I'm closing my eyes for the last time, I I don't want to have that fear. I don't want to have that fear. You know, whether I'm going down there or whether I'm going up there, you know, I I, I laugh because uh, I I I was I was around guys years ago that used to when we talk about that, you know, in jest, you know, and um I would get a kick out of this this one guy who been around the block a few times. Um when he say, hey, Teddy, I ain't worried about that. I got friends in both places. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good line. And I, th <laughs> yeah. and I thought it was a, I thought it was good. Uh, listen, Mike Tyson, you want me to say he was a great fighter? Then you want me to betray what I really, you know what I mean? You want me to do that? I ain't doing it for, listen, I could do it to be a bigger Teddy Atlas, and I know it would work for me. I, I know it would be it do great promotional work for me. I know it would it would make me more popular in certain areas. I know it. I'm not that dumb, not that dumb. But I also know what else it would do to me, mm -hmm. <laughs> and I don't want it to do that to me. I think he was a great talent. I think maybe the night with Michael Spinks, maybe the night with my, maybe he could have been that fighter. Maybe, he could, but he didn't never really get tested. But he might have been ready no matter what. I have to be tested that night. That's how good he was. That's how, for, even though it was a guy who used to be a light heavyweight, I get it. <laughs> but it was still a guy who beat Larry Holmes, who still had something left, mm -hmm. uh, Michael Spinks. So, and a great puncher, um, and an Olympic gold medalist, but, and a special fighter, one of the great light heavyweights of all time. You know what Mike Tyson was? He was a meteor. He was a meteor that struck across, and not too many meteors. And we still talk about him. Mm -hmm. And 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 unlike Haley's comment, he came back, and and he's walking around, mm -hmm. and he's he has become greater after his career, more loved, more beloved, more awed, and he's been forgiven. He found the fountain of forgiveness. I don't know. I wish I could find that where he has been forgotten for all his shortcomings, all the things that he may have done, may not have done. We don't know. Only him and God know. But he's been forgiven of all that, and he's been not only forgiven, he's raised above it and, and above that and been brought above that. He's been brought to the pyramids of, of, of the greatest athletes that, 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 in the world. And in every in every way, in every way, as a person, as a fighter, as a historian, yeah. a, as a figure, mm -hmm. as a celebrity, mm -hmm. I mean, even, it's, a, even a philosopher, everything. Yeah. So I will take it back. All right, all you guys out there, you forgive me. He's the greatest of all time. If you encapsulate all that, <laughs> if you encapsulate everything I just tried to describe. Um, and explain. If you put that all, he's the greatest of all time. Yeah, he is. But he still might be 0-5. In a record of 55 fights, he might, in, in Teddy Atlas's book, again, I got friends in both places. Mm -hmm. So it's okay. Wherever I go, I, I have company. Somebody there will like me. Despite me saying this, he might be 0-5 because of five fights where there was something to overcome which really defines a fight. He came, he he didn't find a way. 
Let me ask Teddy Atlas to introspect on the human nature here. It's part of the complexities of your feelings on this whole thing is that you know to some degree that if you were coaching Mike Tyson, he could be truly great. I know, I'm going to cut you right off because you asked a million dollar question. I wish you didn't, (laughs) but you did. You did. Because that's why. When do I get paid? That's why you get paid. (laughs) I get it. You took the words out of my mouth. (laughs) That's why you are where you are. (laughs) And that's why I'm here. (laughs) The humility. I'm going to, I'm going to, again, full disclosure, it's important, right? Um, I'm going to cheat. I'm going to take some of Cus's wisdom. <laughs> All right? A little bit of mine. Yeah. Um, Cus told somebody that if Teddy Atlas got his way, he might have been a better person, but we would have risked him not being a great fighter. Now, I believe, and I thought Cus did, and I think he did up to that point in his life, <laughs> that part of your strength of character made you a great fighter. Um, and truly a great fighter, and part of that battle to be a better person, that that fight, if you will, <laughs> to be a better person, to overcome the things, to be a better person. Um, part of that fire you have to go through to be a better person. I really, truly bought into it, and, I, and I'm in for life. That is really the only way to be a great fighter. And... I don't think that's what Cus meant. I thought he meant, I think he meant that Cus knew more than I did <laughs> of what was about to come and what would come and what the world was, but how people would try to steal him, how people would take him, how people would steal his guy. The last thing he had, to, really, the, the thing that he lived for, because he lived to have another heavyweight champ. The greatest fighter ever, Cus, in Cus's mind, he could be. And I believe that Cus knew that he he could put forward a guy that had the ability to be the greatest fighter ever without fully completing the mission of what it takes to really be great, but that he wouldn't he wouldn't be around to have to witness it. And that he wouldn't he was willing, to, he would, oh man, this is awful. He's willing to concede that he might be dead in order to have eternal life, in order to have greatness, uh, uh, and which Cus does have greatness, and part of that greatness is attached to Tyson. And he deserves it. He deserves it. Cus was a great man. And I wouldn't be here partly without him. But that was part of the calculation. I know that's deep, and I know that's, oh God, I hate myself. Right now. But, um, but because he knew he was getting out free. He knew he was going to not have to be there. He was, he was getting off easy. Oh, Teddy, how do you say someone's going to be dead? They're getting off easy. Well, I, I say it again in case you didn't hear me, all right? He, he, he was going to get off easy and not have to face where he came up short because he did his job because he put forward the greatest fight of all time and you guys screwed it up. And he knew that that might happen, but you guys screwed it up. And and whatever, that's your fault. That's on, I'll tell you, Tyson would be mad at this, but that's on Tyson. How can you say that, Teddy? He loved me. I'm not saying he didn't love you, but he loved him. He loved some other stuff too. And I don't know if Tyson could ever come to grips light with that and and it's not his job to, but it's my job not to hide from it. I know Cus in dimensions that other people just only think they know. Did Cus know? Did Cus know this about himself? They did. Did he reflect? Did he introspect? Well, he sent the message to me. Cus sent a guy to me. <laughs> my wife was pregnant. We were living in an apartment apartment in Catskill on Cordeskill Road. <laughs> we went through all this. I, you know, and I was getting ready to move to Staten Island. And we still were there for a little while before we did, you know, after all this went down. He sent a guy to me. 
to the house, secret, whatever you want to call it, my wife, me. So I listened to him. Cuz said, if you leave, I'm, I'm a messenger, you know, whatever. If you leave, this was in the aftermath of what the gun, the whole thing. <laughs> you got to remember, Tice was a ward of the state. He was put in Cus's custody. Cus was looking to adopt him <laughs> for obvious reasons. So he had control and, and he loved him. How dare I say anything less? I won't. But it made sense too. But he was a ward of the state still. Do you know what that means? <laughs> There's rules. Mm -hmm. it means the state's still overlooking it. Mm -hmm. If he ain't living the right life, you know, you gotta remember he came out of you know he came out of a jail, so reform school. But if he ain't living the life, he could be taken away from cuss. What's not living the right life? Well, he he wasn't in school no more. They didn't know about it. Um, he he had some things that were going on. We won't get into that right now in school and different things, whatever. Mm -hmm. And he had his trainer put a gun to his head. That ain't so good. If a report came back to them that that happened. He would have been taken away from Cus. That couldn't happen. Look, nobody knows this. Mm -hmm. I talk about it a little bit, but never probably, because why would I? I don't know. Why am I doing it now? I don't know. Because, I don't know. Because I am. Me because doers. it's now. Because it's now, maybe. Maybe because it's now. I don't know. So he sent this man that, you know, obviously we both knew, and he said, here's the deal, Teddy. If no talk about this, wants it to, you know, disappear basically, you leave and he will give you 5% his word. Can you imagine? He will, he will give you 5% of Tyson's earnings for the rest of his career. And, um, but I don't regret it one bit because it wouldn't have happened anyway. See, that's where I, I could be honest with my people say, oh, stand up guy, because I told him to shove it with a, you know, you know, to the, in that place, and and um and tell Cuz to shove it in that freaking place. You know, I was mad. Um, Teddy, Teddy, don't get angry. Don't get angry. Are you out of? Are you serious? Get out of here. Tell him to go shove it over. And you know, my wife was like, "Huh," oh. but, and then people like it. Why didn't you take the deal? It wasn't a deal. <laughs> it was an escape clause. For cuss, it was it, it was a it was an insurance policy that his you know that this kid wouldn't be taken away from, him. and mm -hmm. thank God he wasn't. I wasn't going to go and say nothing. They didn't have to worry about cuss. Forgot who I was. Yeah. Cuss forgot why he went to court for me because of those because of those characteristics that he said he loved and he noticed and that that he admired. I didn't lose those characters. He forgot that that was me. He forgot who he was talking to. Yeah. He didn't have to do that. How about that's why I told him to shove it up his ass? Not because of the other insult. Yeah. And then and then when people said to me, Oh, you were stand up, because it was around a little bit. It was around in the circles. And then when people, oh, oh stand up, Teddy. He he didn't care about the money. I said, Stand up, Teddy. What are you talking about? How how about how about just realistic, Teddy? How about I live in a real world? That I was never gonna get that money. So I'm saying I'm standing up to something that I knew never existed. So I ain't stand up. Not in that way. I am in other ways, maybe, but not don't don't put a medal on my chest for that. Because because that never existed. Yeah. It was never meant to exist. But he didn't even understand. That was the one thing that that really disappointed me in Cuss. I was like, Cuss, you really allowed this to get to you. <laughs> where where you where you allowed it to really fog up your thinking to the point where you're smarter than that, you're better than that, that you would actually think you got a freaking offer me a freaking pieces of silver? Yeah. You really think that? That's what you, freak you. Like all that you told me that you love me and that we were, you, I was the young master and the, all this and and you think you were gonna buy me? And I was gonna and that was gonna keep me quiet? How about I would keep quiet because I would always keep quiet? 
So he thought maybe you might betray him. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. And why did he think that? No, no, really. Fear? Yeah, but yeah. Fear is at the essence of everything. Is it connected with everything? Fear of losing what he was going to lose. But it was more than fear. It was him not believing in the things that he told me he believed in. He didn't even know that. He believed in me because I was a stand-up guy because I because I didn't sell myself because because I you know I didn't freaking turn evidence I I didn't make a deal I didn't do and and that's why he went to court that's why he stood up for me and I appreciate it and that was what he lived by and that was his you know those were the blocks of being a man oh so much for those blocks well it's like you said loyalty requires. Uh... You know, he would have had to take a risk on losing immortality that he yeah. would achieve by creating and that's the a only great way you heavyweight find champion. One hundred percent. But the only way you ever find out if somebody is it's hard. really that it's hard. is the test. Yeah. And it was Cus. This is Shakespearean, you know, this story. <laughs> Cus told me. Cus said, and it does come in different forms. Yeah. I and said, all right, Cus. This was his test. And and some people pass this test because they're able to pass that test because it's not really a test, not for them, because it doesn't speak to their weakness. But it's the test that speaks to the weakness. That's the one. So this one, I, I get it. I get what it spoke to, cuz. And you know what? At the end of the day, I forgive you. And I feel bad for you. I feel bad that you were put in that position after you lived your life that way and that you that you taught that and you preached that from the mountaintops that that you had to be that you had to be I'm not going to use the word but that that you had to fail yourself and that you had to somehow know that before you died. I just pray that you didn't know that. And you still don't know that because you were great. You were great. And um and you've given me some you know, you've given me some to to aspire towards. To try to, to try to be less weak. Try to be better. And try to be as good as you wanted to be. I wish I can someday. More importantly, I I wish I could make my father, you know, feel um just feel good up there. 